So the reason why um, I'm doing this introduction to our risk assessment is that they form the basis for the conclusion, conclusions that we're going to share with you in a short time. And we have, if you see the world map, we have uh, quite a lot of the countries of the world that are covered by our risk assessments. We currently have 71 timber legality risk assessment and is going to expand with another five uh, within the next six months. Um, in the UTR, it says that you, our company, will have to be familiar with the and address the risk associated with supply chain and do risk assessments to find the risks that are relevant. Our country risk assessments focus on country national level or specific regions of a, of a country. And that's something you as a company will be able to take in when you do due diligence. Um, and we base our risk, risk assessments on our risk assessment framework. This means we have identified which categories of law that we are evaluating for each risk assessment. And we're looking into legal right to harvest, taxes and fees, timber harvesting activities, trade and transport, and third parties' rights. And these categories of law are similar to the ones that are defined in the UTR as applicable legislation. We have then furthermore divided these categories of law into subcategories. This allows us to be very precise on where the risks are for each country. Um, and it also allows us to have a systematic approach for all the countries that we're doing risk assessments for. And we have for these in total 21 subcategories um, done an analysis um, of first the, the legal requirements. So we list all relevant legislation for each indicator, and then we do a summary uh, and description of the legal requirements. Um, following that, um, we look into uh, both who's the applicable authorities, what kind of relevant documents are there for each indicator, and then we do a summary of the risks uh, for each indicator. And that's, I assume, very key to most of you. If we do identify that there are any risks, we also propose risk mitigation measures. So that means coming up with the suggestions on how you address these risks if you want to source for, from, for example, Ukraine. A very key thing to know is how we decide if there's a risk or, well, not no risk, because there's never a country with no risk, but at least low risk. Um, we have um, the conclusions uh, is either split up to low risk or specified risk. And specified risk can both be a very systematic high level um, risk of illegal logging, or it can also be an indication of risk. And we split it up into specified risk because this is where you as a company will have to be aware. You will need to look into what is the risk and how can I mitigate it. And as such, it, um, it's just a way of saying you need to be aware uh, for this specific indicator. Um, the way we uh, conclude low risk would be to look at whether it's something identified in a country is like a risk identified in a country, if it's just temporary, if it's not systematic, if it's limited in impact, or if it's effectively controlled and monitored and enforced, then we say, well, that's a low risk. If, on the other hand, we identify something that affects a wide area, causes significant uh, damage or continues over a long period of time, or if it indicates that there's breakdown of the enforcement of the system, or if it's not correctly responded to or has a negative impact, then we say specified risk. And the way we get there uh, to, to be able to make these conclusions is going through a quite thorough process um, of research for each of our risk assessments. And um, this is the process. Um, we, of course, start with, with developing the framework which we have in place. Then we select the commodity and jurisdiction. And for the, for the theme of today, we're looking into timber, of course. And then we look into Ukraine and European part of Russia. We, for each risk assessment, engage a local expert. And this can either be one of our own staff, if we have staff that are knowledgeable about forestry and legality issues, um, or we hire in an expert, uh, sorry, a consultant um, to assist us. Um, we then develop the draft um, report, and I have to say that this is a desk-based report, so we do not go on site, but we collect everything that's uh, publicly available. 
to base our results on. If there then are any gaps, and that would be point number five, um, if there are gaps in information that are publicly available, we bring in experts. So we have a thorough process of bringing in experts on different fields and different indicators. And we also include stakeholders to discuss, so what's the level of risk? Is this a low risk or is it a specified risk? So basically to, to scale the issue. Um, and once we're through with this process, we'll bring into uh, the final quality assurance, which means uh, editing, final review and translating. Some of these risk assessments are done in local languages for a start and then being translated. Um, once we're through with the report and we're happy with it, we send it into public consultation and we do that on our sourcing hub, uh, where it will be available for public consultation for 60 days. When that is done and we've taken into account all the comments that we've received, we make it public on our sourcing hub. So that's where you can find all of our risk assessments. And then we have an ongoing maintenance. So if there's any major changes in the legislation or in the risk level, we will try to update as much as possible. Sometimes that will be single indicators or uh, we might try to apply for funding to do a full update of a country. Usually we, do an, we plan for an update every five years, but can do it more regularly if that's required. Um, and then again, it also depends on funding avail available. So most of our risk assessment is funding by, funded by projects um, like EU Commission. Uh, under our life projects, uh, UK aid, and a few of risk assessment is supported by companies. So, for example, for this risk assessment on Russia, the European part of Russia, is funded by the Stark Foundation. All of this research goes into our timber legality risk assessments. And these are long documents, uh, averagely around 90 pages. So it can be quite heavy to go through that. So we've developed a series of tools to make it more easily accessible. Um, we'll have our list of applicable legislation. We also develop a risk mitigation guide, which is listing all the risks identified together with the risk mitigation measures that we propose. And we also have a document guide, which is um, examples of documents together with a description on how to use it for um, risk mitigation and supply chain mapping. And these tools are something that will be available for all of our newer risk assessment. You might not find it for some of our older ones. So it depends a bit on the, the availability. Availability depends a bit on the country in question at this stage. And all of it you can find on our sourcing hub. Um, and this is, uh, was a quick introduction. Um, today's topic is the risk assessment for Ukraine and European part of Russia. So I'll just introduce it quickly, and then I'll hand it over to my colleague, Michal Rai, who will present um, the Russian conclusions. You might ask, why just focus on part of Russia? And the thing is, we, we have a risk assessment for Russia, all of Russia from 2017, and we found it very likely that there are differences in the risk profiles across Russia. So Eastern part of Russia compared to the European part of Russia, will have some differences in the scale of risks. Um, so therefore, it's, it's, we found it useful to target the risk assessments. And the first risk assessment, sorry, the first regional risk assessment we did for, we've done for Russia is then the European part of Russia, because that's also where much of the timber entering, entering the UA, the U, EU is coming from. Um, we do not have a final risk assessment yet for the European part of Russia. We are currently uh, translating it. And the next step will be uh, public consultation, which will be from June until September. So it's a bit longer than our usual six, 60 days of public consultation, but that's because of summer holidays in Europe. So we'll give a bit more time for people to, to go through the, the report and respond. Um, additional to the risk assessment, we're also having a series of tools, so risk mitigation guide, document guide, and list of applicable legislation. Another tool that we're developing for Russia, which we do not usually have available, is a due diligence explained for Russian suppliers tool. And this is being developed, and I'll actually, I'd like to ask for your input if you have any. 
the reason why we're developing these tools is that we are, well, we, you know, work with Russian companies. We have, um, we've received many uh, comments about how frustrating and challenging it has been to understand the UTR and also understand the request from European buyers. So some companies will ask for one set of documents, another company will ask for different kinds of documents. So how to juggle this? Um, and this has been frustrating for companies. And we would like to turn that into a more positive experience and help Russian companies prepare for these requests. So if you have something you would like to help us respond to, like what's your frustrations, what's your challenges, or even what has worked really well in your supplier relationship, then please let us know. And we would like to get input both from Russian companies and European companies. Just uh, send an email to me on the sourcing hub preferred by nature.org uh, by 14th of May. Um, yeah, and then quickly, um, the second session after Russia is for Ukraine and the status of the Ukrainian risk assessment is that it's still being the final step of being developed. Um, so we have been through uh, the initial risk assessment process uh, with the research and are now engaging stakeholders and finalizing the, the draft. We do, we are at a stage where we can present our findings and our risks, um, but we still have not um, done the final QA. The risk assessment will be available for public consultation in July. And together with the risk assessment, we are also publishing risk mitigation guide, document guide, and list of applicable legislation.